Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. In this week's video, what I am planning on doing is showing you how to get like a um, Halo type um, ammo counter on the actual weapon. And I'm going to stick with the diegetic design. So this is what I mean roughly. If you've ever played Halo, you'll know what it is. And it's where essentially the, there is a screen on the back of the weapon. Um, now this is a part of the actual weapons mesh. Um, so anybody in the world can see it kind of thing. Um, it's not just um, a, a UI object which only only the player, like only you see through the screen. If, um, I think the way that diegetic display is explained is uh, when, a user, when a game's interface exists as an element in the universe, so the player character sees them rather than just the player. So rather than just you, the screen, um, the elements are actually in the game. And that's what this is essentially. It's the screen is built into the gun in the world. It's not. It's not something that's only on your screen visible for you. Here's a good example actually. In the top right, you can see the weapon um, with, with with a sort of ammo counter underneath it as these digits. This would only be visible to me, the player, um, whereas this would be in the world, in the game world, uh, visible to everyone. Anyway, enough of that. That's what we're gonna we're gonna do. Um, if I just hit play here, you can see I've got this gun, and as we shoot, it, it goes down. Now, um, just the way that I've done it, um, this is again using a material. There is an alternative method that you can put a UI element in the in 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 the sort of object, um, but I'm 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 not certain if that is. I think that's a non-diegetic version because I believe only my player camera can see it rather than uh, anybody in the world. I think if somebody was stood next to me and looked at the gun in my hand, they wouldn't. However, I am willing to explore that as an option. I've not checked that, so I'm not confident. But this is the way I've done this. I'll talk you through it, um, and then whether you use it or not, it's up to you. So let's get into it. Okay, so with a fresh project loaded up, um, what we're going to do is, uh, this is a first person template, so I'm just going to select the first person character here in the world, um, and then in the top right hand corner in the world outline I'm just going to select edit, uh, this should take you straight to the blueprint, and then I'm going to navigate over to the viewport, and what I'm actually going to do is, I'm just going to move over here just behind the weapon. <clears throat> now, the reason that I'm doing this, this way, um, you've got really, depending on what assets you've got, you've got a couple of options really. Um, this weapon um, is, is made up of one material. Now, if you was to model this yourself or if you was to edit the, the material, you could separate out in the UV uh, just this screen and have that screen set up as a separate material and then you could probably achieve uh, this effect um, with, with multiple materials. However, because because this weapon only has one material and I don't have the ability really to easily edit edit the UV. What I'm going to actually have to do is I'm going to put two planes over the front of this lens so it, it doesn't look much different um, and we get the same effect. So what I'm going to do with, um, with the gun selected I'm going to add component, I'm going to add a plane <clears throat> and I'm going to select a socket to parent as uh, maybe the grip point I'm then going to select rotate from the top and I'm going to move back just a little bit and I'm going to rotate this up 90 degrees I'm also going to change the scale to like 0.1 and 0.1 I'm then going to hit the move tool and see if I can grab the X we are moving too much here we go move that up and then I'm going to move that back Okay, so now I'm just going to tweak it just a little bit. Um, okay, so I finally moved that in place. What I actually did is I turned off the grid snapping, which I don't know why I didn't do in the first place. Um, and that just allowed me to move it around a bit more freely um, and get it into place. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that plane and I'm going to call this one um, Ammo L, the left. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard, select the green, uh, select the green widget, 
and it should duplicate it but it hasn't so I'm just going to right click on it in the menu and duplicate and change it to ammo R for right um, this one hasn't copied the parent so we select grip point and I'm going to move that over so now I've got two separate screens and uh, let's move that like that I don't want them to overlap too much so maybe that that's actually really annoying whilst he's wiggling around but that'll do so now we've got two planes and they've both got um, a plane basic material so what, we, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the um, material so then this actually shows numbers on the screen <clears throat> so back to the content folder um, we're going to right click we're going to create a new material you can also you click on uh, here, material, and I'm going to go M underscore ammo L. And we're not going to make the R just yet. We're going to make the material and then we'll copy it and just change the differences. So open that material up and you should get this. I'm just going to select the preview mode as plain, uh, just so it shows as I expect it to. And that should be fine. Um, and then we need a sub uh, UV function. Now, a sub UV function allows you to use multiple. Actually, let me just go to the next bit and it'll be easier to explain, actually. So I'm just going to nip back to the content browser because I need to import an asset. Now, what I want to quickly show you is what I did to get the numbers on the screen. Now, you're not actually typing the numbers in. I've got this digital display here with numbers one to nine and then a zero. And then in like Paint or Photoshop, I've just adjusted this image so then I can only see the numbers. Um, so I'm going to import that into the game. I can't remember where I saved it. I think it's on my desktop. And there we go, some numbers. Um, so, yeah, I've just created this texture. And as you can see, I've just cropped it down. Uh, I've tried to crop it as equally as I, I can on either side. If it is slightly out, it, it, it does move around. But I'll, I'll just leave you to um, sort of mess around with that. Um, essentially you just need roughly equal space in between each number so if you want to make this in Photoshop you can do I guess um, or if you download one if, if it acts a bit weird um, you can you can understand why anyway so what we want to do now is we want to add a texture texture sample and with this selected um, for whatever reason, this is just automatically selected um, my numbers texture. But if it didn't, in the bottom left hand corner, you can click on where it's mine says numbers. This may say none uh, for you, or it may have automatically selected something, something else. Um, just click on here and then find what you've called it in your um, in your content browser. Uh, so with this selected, um, you can see all the numbers there. Um, I'm going to plug this into the texture. Uh, which it is not letting me. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I don't believe. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Hang on, have I selected the right texture? Oh, texture object. Sorry, my my fault. Um, so it's a texture object, not a texture sample. Sorry, my my, my fault that. Um, so with the texture object selected, that'll go into your texture 2D. Uh, my apologies. And you should see that if we plug in the RGB into the emissive color. Okay, wait, I need to plug the rest in. Anyway, so going back to what I was going to say earlier. If you've ever used sprite sheets, this this will make more sense to you. But um, this is one image which technically contains 10 other images. So I'm going to break this up into um, five columns and two rows. And then if I say in column one, row one, um, the number one is, and in 
and then column two row one is number two and so on and so forth we can actually break this picture up into 10 different pictures if that makes sense or frames um so if, if you know what a sprite sheet is you'll know that um a sprite sheet is sort of like an animation all on one image and you can sort of like flip book through it uh, to create an animation in a sense we're doing this but more in a in, in much more of a, a static way um so the sub images is the number of images within this single image um so if you hold number two on the keyboard you get a uh, two vector and this is going to be your rows and columns um so i'm going to have five rows and two columns i believe is the way that this works um if if this looks wrong just flip this around but i guess i'm going to find out in a second um and then how many frames or actually what frame you're going to be on <clears throat> so if i just have this as a i'm just going to drag a constant in here and I've, that's onto there and then there's just one last thing under uvs we're just going to do a texture coordinate okay so you can see see here that my frames at zero is the one because it's the very first um sort of row and column and then if i change this constant here to one this should switch to two two uh, and then so on and so forth your constant and subtract there you go subtract uh, and you take uh, one away from this so here we will do i think that yeah so that might do it so um for whatever reason uh zero minus one gives you the actual zero and then when we change it to one uh, you should get the number one so that'll keep it in sequence now but what we're going to do is we're actually going to replace this constant with our ammunition number so realistically our material is working here um, we just need to get this uh, number one change to our data so from the a let's change that to a yeah i think it is it's a collection parameter and so far we've not made that collection so uh let's make a new one so back to your content browser we're going to right click we're going to go to materials and textures we're going to go to material parameter collection and we'll just put this one as i'm going to put mc for material collection parameter so mcp underscore um ammo keep it simple open that up and then once you've opened that up you'll have scala parameters and vector parameters um we're going to create two scala parameters we're going to open both of them so zero and one we're going to open these up and we'll have the default values set to zero but we're going to have ammo l and ammo right or r oh not e uh, r save that uh you can close that as well we're not going to need that anymore and um, then back into your material for ammo l and select your collection as mcp ah oh, i should have put mpc anyway um ammo and then underneath it'll ask you for a parameter name we're going to select ammo l and then when we set this ammo l in our blueprint which we'll get to in just a minute this will update what number uh, should be displayed and then our screen will update so with that one being done we're going to press save now for me this does usually take um just a few uh, we're going to close that we're going to nip back to the main and we're going to right click on our ammo uh, material and we're going to duplicate and we're going to change the name of this one to ammo r open this up and we're just going to change ammo r and um, the material collection parameter to ammo r so this should now say ammo r and i'll go in 
hit save and that's fine once that's saved we can close it right so now we're back in our first person character we've got our left screen and our right screen on the left screen obviously change your material now to m underscore ammo l and on the right we're going to change this one to m underscore ammo r and i've got a funny feeling that these are rotated the wrong way around so we'll fix that in just a minute um okay so now we need an ammo number over on the left on the variables add a new variable and call it um ammo and we'll change this to an integer in the event graph let's add it in so what i'm actually going to do is i need this event begin play but I don't need all of this motion controller garbage. So I'm going to select all that and delete it. I'm just going to press compile and see if anything complains, which it doesn't. So just before my spawn projectile here, I'm just going to type in event uh, begin. I can't spell. Event begin. And I'm going to drag my ammo out. I'm going to set it. I'm going to set it to 24, for example. Um, and that's fine for now. Um, and then just quickly, we're going to get our ammo. And if our ammo is greater than zero, um, let's move this up a little bit if it is we'll do a branch uh, true if our ammo is greater than zero is true then we can fire if it's false then we don't want to do anything um, once we've fired and we've done all of this stuff um, we want to get our ammo we want to minus one ammo round, so minus minus, and you've got this function called decrement int. And what that does is it subtracts one and then resets it. So that's the same as doing a subtract and then another set. Um, and then we really want to update our ammo counter on our weapon that we've done that. So to do that, we're gonna create a, a custom function. So here in functions, we're gonna add a new function. Um, we're going to change this function name to update um, ammo count. We need an input because we need to tell it what ammo we currently have. So on inputs, add a new parameter, change this to an integer and change this to ammo, uh, ammo I guess. Okay. So we're actually going to set both the left and right at the same time. So what we want to do is our our ammo counter is so our ammo is going to be twenty four. Now because we've got two screens, I'm going to rotate these now. Actually, it's bugging me. What are you doing? I'm going to rotate these. Come on. And I guess we're going to have to change the size of it. There we go. Um, I'll change these in just a minute. So because we've got two screens, we're going to need one to say sort of the tens number uh, and one of them to say the units number. Um, so by that, I mean for 24, we want the left to say 20 or 2. And we want the right to say 4 uh, for 24. So what we need to do is to get the left hand number, we need to divide our ammo by 10. Uh, and by dividing it by 10, you're gonna, always going to get how many times it goes into 10. So 24, 20 goes into 10 twice. Um, that's going to be our left number, 2. Um, so from that, from here, let's go for set. Um, 
Scala uh, parameter value. And the collection we want to set is MCP ammo. And we want to set the left. So I'll pick your parameter. Then if you drag this into the parameter value, it should convert it for you. And that's fine. Now the next one's, um, it's not tricky, but it's it's not a, a, a commonly used, um, or at least in my case, it's not a commonly used function or calculation. So the next one's going to be, it's going to be the percent sign. Uh, and this, this is modulo. So <clears throat> what this essentially is going to do, this is going to do a division, but whatever's left over whatever the remainder of that division is so for example if i do if i do ammo uh, mod 10 my answer is going to be 2 but this is going to tell me what remains after that so my remainder would be 4 so this is what we're going to use to set the the right ammo so i'm just going to add a sequence here a sequence just allows you to do multiple functions, but they'll do they'll they'll execute one after another. So I'm going to drag off off the then one, and I'm going to type in set scala scala, scala uh, parameter value, and this is just the second one. I'm going to pick the same collection, and then the parameter name is going to be ammo r, and then again we're just going to plug that in. So now realistically when we call this function this is going to calculate for us and change our screen to update all the time so let's go back to our event graph and then essentially we've changed the ammo so now we can drag in our function we've just made and plug that into here and plug ammo into there that says new parameter but it should have said ammo so i'm just going to go back here and see what's happened um Oh, we didn't compile, that's why. Okay, so this is complaining. Um, oh, okay, that's probably why. So I'll get rid of that. And if I right click, I should be able to refresh node. This has changed to ammo. Plug this in, hit compile. All's good. So we're gonna update our ammo. That's gonna update our material. And then just for some reassurance, at the, at the begin play where we set our ammo counter, Let's just update our ammo straight away so our screen's alive. If we go back to the viewport now, hit compile, uh, we get zeros. If we press play, we get <laughs> an upside down 24. So let me just uh, sort that out. Uh, let's spin that by 180. And again, by 180. Again, you can play around with this and make it look much nicer, but uh, because I'm rushing, I am not going to bother. I'm going to pull these out just a little bit because they seem to be overlapping. Hit compile, hit play, and now you can see we've got 24 as we shoot. That number is calculating and going down. Now, like I said, um, this isn't extremely um, useful for every circumstance. Um, because essentially we're just moving through a sprite sheet, but this can come up in some very unique areas. And also, it saves you having to load font into Unreal. Um, you can use any sprite sheet. You don't even have to use it for this Halo type weapon. You could use it for sort of like code locks or anything like that. Um, I think it's just really useful to know that that's a feature. Anyway. If that was useful for you, please consider giving me a like. If um, there's anything that you want me to cover with this, or if there's completely anything else that you want me to cover, leave a comment down below. Um, if you're liking what you're seeing and you want to continue to see more, please consider subscribing. Uh, I know the majority of viewers um, are not actually subscribed, so um, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, hit subscribe, you'll get to see more videos. And that's pretty much it from me. Uh, down below, there'll be a Discord link. Um, you can come and join the server, you can chat with me there, you can ask me questions, you can request things, whatever you want really, um, you, can, you can message me, and yeah, that's pretty much it, that's it for me, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in another video, thank you.